But there's more people in here today, too. Yeah. Oh, that body heat. Yeah. All right. The regular meeting of the Mishawaka Common Council for Monday, December 21st, 2020, will please come to order. This evening, consistent with Governor Holcomb's executive orders, we are once again going to be observing social distancing and the wearing of face masks here in the chambers. Consistent with those orders, as well as our local health department orders, we do have a limitation of 25 bodies here in the chamber. So as others may choose to attend in person this evening, I may have to ask for your forgiveness if we have to ask those who are here for items that are later on the agenda to step out so that we can make room for those who have business in front of us earlier in the agenda, but we'll try to balance it out as best we can. Please, if you're asked to step out in the hallway, if you could continue to observe social distancing, we would appreciate that. Um, we are also, as has been our practice throughout the pandemic, making this meeting available remotely. To that end, members of the public who are participating remotely will be asked to place their microphone on mute during the meeting with the exception of any public hearing. At the appropriate point in the public hearing, I will invite the public to unmute their microphone for purposes of submitting any comments they wish to make, one person at a time. All persons wishing to make public comments will be asked to first state their name and address for the record. After completing his or her public comments, members of the public will once again be asked to place their microphone on mute. Thank you for your cooperation. I will add, although we as a council are also observing those state and local mandates, after checking with health authorities on multiple occasions, it's possible since we're socially distanced up here for us to be able to be safe without having the mask on. If you've ever had to do as much talking as we have to do at some time, particularly somebody who pumps out as much hot air as I do, the mask can become a little bit constrictive. So if you see us taking it off, we're not trying to be inconsistent with the mandates for you and the requirements for you. It's just that we need to at times have uh, a different ability to speak. So with that, we will begin uh, with our Pledge of Allegiance, which will be followed with a moment of silence and remembrance of the more than 318,000 Americans who have lost their lives as a result of COVID-19. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Give me just a second. Attached it to the back of something. I'd ring it, but I'd probably screw up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I obviously have placed it somewhere. That's okay. With some other papers that I, uh, I was doing some shuffling earlier. The beauty of it is we're not going anywhere until you find us. Okay, your time. Yeah. All right. We'll have a momentary pause. But we have a recess later on. <laughs> we may have to. <laughs> the record will also reflect, and that'll be this will be evident when we take the role that we have three council uh, people participating remotely. So we will be at full strength this evening. Isn't it amazing how quiet the room gets at a time like this? Thank you. 
guess this is how you end 29 years by not being able to find a vote sheet. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Mrs. DeMade? Here. Mr. Benicki? Here. Mr. Hazen? Here. Mr. Mamalenti? Here. Mr. Emmons? Here. Mr. Belovich? Here. Mr. Compton? Here. Mrs. Volker? Here. Mr. Hixenbaugh? Here. Approval of the minutes of our regular meeting of December 7th, 2020. Are there any additions or corrections? Hearing the none, then the minutes will stand approved as received from the clerk's office. Petitions, communications, remonstrance, and memorials. Yes, Mr. President. We have a letter from the Board of Zoning Appeals regarding their recommendation from their December 8, 2020 meeting. Honorable members, a regular meeting of the Mishawaka Board of Zoning Appeals was held on the above reference date, at which time the following use variance was considered. Appeal number 2020-52, an appeal submitted by Stephen Van Dam requesting a use variance for 823 East 3rd Street to allow a three-unit apartment to remain in R1 single-family residential zoning. The board, with a vote of four to zero, recommended approval subject to the following condition of approval. They're required to provide four paved off-street parking spaces. This is signed by Carrie Myers, administrative planner. We also have a letter from the City Plan Commission regarding recommendations from, for their December 8th meeting. Honorable members, a regular meeting of the Mishawaka Plan Commission was held on, held on the above reference date, at which time the following proposed ordinance was considered. Petition number 2020-21, a petition submitted by Smith of the v. Patel to rezone 2754 Lincoln Way East from C1 General Commercial District to C10 Filling Station Commercial District the commission with a vote of six to zero forwarded a favorable recommendation. Pursuant to Indiana Code 36-7-4-605, the Mishawaka Plan Commission hereby certifies to the Mishawaka Common Council the attached proposed ordinance regarding the above matter. This is signed by Carrie Myers, Administrative Planner. Thank you. This evening we have no report of any special committee, so we will move into ordinances on first reading. Proposed ordinance number 2020-47, an ordinance amending chapter 137 of the municipal code of the city of Mishawaka, Indiana, as from time to time amended, commonly known as the zoning ordinance of 1966 of the city of Mishawaka, Indiana. This is to rezone from C1 district to C10 district to allow convenience store with gas pumps, part of 2754 Lincoln Way East, existing parking area for Mishawaka Inn. The petitioner has sent a request to withdraw this proposed ordinance. Thank you. At this point in time, the chair would entertain a motion to approve the petitioner's request to withdraw proposed ordinance number 2020-47. Mr. President. So moved. Oh, it's already <laughs> done. Do you want to second it then? Second. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the petitioner's request to withdraw proposed ordinance number 2020-47. Any questions or comments from the council? Hearing none, all those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, we will have to take a roll call vote since we have some members participating remotely. So, Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. Demade? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hixenbach. Yes. Yes, it's nine to zero. Proposed ordinance number 2020-48, an ordinance amending ordinance 5680 as amended, the fixing of salaries of all employees of the city of Mishawaka, except Mishawaka Park Department elected officials and the Mishawaka Utilities for the city of Mishawaka, Indiana for the year beginning January 1st, 2020. This is, um, it's requested the second reading at this evening's meeting. Thank you. At this time, the chair would entertain a motion to waive our standing council rules and hold mm -hmm. first and second reading on proposed ordinance number 2020-48 this evening. So moved. Second. 
Motion has been made and seconded to waive our standing council rules and hold first and second reading on proposed ordinance number 2020-48 this evening. Any questions or discussion from the council? Hearing none, then Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. Tomei? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalanti? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hixenbaugh? Yes. The request is passes 920. Thank you. With that, we will move into the second reading and public hearing of proposed ordinance number 2020-48. Anyone who is physically present who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance, if you would, please come forward to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. President, council members, and Merry Christmas. Mayor Dave Wood here to speak uh, in support of proposed ordinance number 2020-48 and 49. We'll be also hearing, I think, from our controller, uh, Becky Miller, on just how we're going to pull this off. But uh, I'm here to request uh, a specialty pay, if you will, for our staff members who have uh, answered the call, stepped up, went above and beyond, took on job descriptions and and uh, or, or job uh, functions that clearly exceeded their job descriptions, uh, did it in a uh, a way that uh, Mishawaka public servants typically do it. Uh, they did it because they have a love and passion to serve their fellow citizens here in Mishawaka. And uh, I was here all along to see it because we never closed. We stayed on duty as essential workers and uh, especially during a pandemic and a time <coughs> when our citizens need our services the most, our public servants stepped up in a big way to um, deliver those services in a way that I am very, very proud of. And I appreciate, in fact, our staff doesn't even know that we're doing this here tonight, that I'm requesting this here tonight, but I'm here to ask for a specialty pay for our staff. It consists of $750 for public safety, police, fire, EMTs. It consists of $600 for central services employees and uh, members of our sewer department who took on extra duties themselves and keeping the rest of us safe and things such as wearing hazardous uh, hazmat uh, suits to go into sewers and do things that most people just can't imagine doing. And then it's $500 for all the other staff members full-time who showed up and worked and did such a valiant job uh, during the pandemic when really all other government offices here in the region surrounding communities, the state of Indiana closed down. <coughs> and so I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Uh, nobody's asking for this uh, as far as from the employee labor groups, uh, but it's just something that seems right to me that, that we do this. And um, to pay for it, we did not want to dip into next year's budget to do it. Uh, we didn't want to dip into COVID funds that could be clearly used better to serve our citizens. We wanted to dip into our budget this year, 2020, from savings that we, we were able to, um, to achieve, predominantly from our travel and training budgets. Uh, this year we did, each department has travel and training line items in their budgets. Uh, we didn't do much travel this year because of the pandemic and uh, training. A lot of it was done online if, if we needed to do it, which came at a cost savings too. Uh, but we're able to pay for this out of our existing budget without doing an additional. And um, all departments except for public safety. Those two departments, the savings will come from some health 
insurance uh, line item savings that we're, we were able to realize this year. Mm -hmm. So we're able to cover this uh, from within our budgets without having to ask for more. Um, and so uh, the groups that will not uh, partake in this will be uh, part-time city uh, workers and uh, also uh, because predominantly we didn't we didn't do a lot with part-time this year. And then secondly, elected officials. Well, I appreciate uh, each and every one of you stepping up, serving here in person during this entire pandemic. Appreciate it more than uh, you can, more than I can say. Um, but this is the job that we stepped up to do. And in times like these, it doesn't matter whether it's good times or bad. This is the job we stepped up to do. So I'm not asking for this for elected officials, although you all greatly deserve it. And um, just want to uh, tell you that, you know, we'll have to perform a, a few minor miracles to uh, get this uh, taken care of by year's end and then the last pay check of the year for our staff members who don't know that they're getting this. Uh, and I apologize for the late notice on this and for the first and second reading, uh, but it's from within the budget and we're spending out of this budget still. And so uh, it, you know, just by uh, the nature of that, uh, we really couldn't forecast or project this, you know, months, even weeks ago. And so, uh, so I apologize, apologize for that and appreciate your willingness to, to hear this and consider second reading of this tonight. Um, but it, it goes with uh, just my unending gratitude, um, pride, and um, genuine affection for our public servants who deserve this and uh, wished it were more. They deserve a lot more. Uh, but, you know, this is this is what we can afford in these times. With that, I'll take any questions you have. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mayor Wood? Mr. Compton. Um, Mayor Wood, it's more of a comment. Um, thank you for doing this and thank you for bringing this to us. Um, it's appreciated by um, by the, uh, I'm sure will be appreciated by the employees. Um, I apologize if you wanted the, to this to be more of a surprise. Uh, I did call the two groups that we negotiate with, with fire and police and let them know it was coming, let them know what we were gonna be doing tonight. And I can tell you they're ecstatic. So it's very much appreciated. They had no clue it was coming. Um, and it, it, it uh, they, it's, they appreciate it. I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions for his honor? Mr. Evans. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I really feel that this is excellent to do. It, every one of our employees are deserving of this. In fact, we're doing almost more than what the federal government is doing, which is a feather in our cap compared to what's going on at the federal level. So I wholeheartedly endorse this, both, both amendments, and, that, and I thank you for doing this for our employees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments for the mayor? Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Anyone else who's physically present who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance, if you would, please come forward to the podium. Seeing no one, we will move into anyone who is participating remotely who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance. If you would, please unmute your microphone and state your name and address for the record. Hearing no one, is there anyone physically present who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance? If so, please come forward. And we will move into anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance. Please unmute your microphone. Are there any council members who wish to speak? I would, Mr. President, if I may. Mr. Mamalenti. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to take this time to uh, give special thanks to the mayor, uh, his staff, uh, Ms. Miller, the controller for for uh, sharpening the pencil and finding some some wiggle room in the in this year's budget to to surely uh, take care of those employees that are on the front line 
that don't have the option to log in remotely and are, uh, are put their lives and families' lives at risk every single day for, for taking care of our great city. So uh, on behalf of everybody, I want to thank the mayor and the controller and all those involved. Thank you, Mr. Mamalenti. Other comments from the council? I will simply add that I uh, also appreciate the initiative that was shown by Mayor Wood and the administration to uh, bring this to us this evening. And I appreciate uh, the mayor's apologies, but certainly uh, none are necessary. This is actually what we should do in order to make sure that this happens, particularly at this time of year, and that we get this out to our deserving employees as quickly as possible. So, so thank you again for the initiative that you showed to put this together. And also thank you for incorporating some of the suggestions that we had as a council with regard to how this would be structured. That also is very much appreciated. I also want to echo the, uh, the thanks that have been expressed to our employees. Um, I suspect we all agree that we're blessed to have any number, you know, really from top to bottom, we have wonderful people working for the city of Mishawaka in all different capacities. But that's never been more evident than during this year, which is, I would suggest, the most difficult year that we've ever experienced as a community. And people have risen to the occasion and done their job. It's easy for for many people to recognize the good work that's done by our public safety employees and others who have a forward face to the community and who they see on a regular basis. They've done a great job, as have the people who fall into the second category that the mayor referenced with regard to this. But sometimes the unsung heroes also are the folks who work in an office here in City Hall who may or may not have as much contact with the public except when they visit City Hall to do some business. And they also have showed up every day, worked really hard to provide quality service and, do, and done a fantastic job. So we're blessed to have uh, great people working for us in every capacity. Um, I think this is a good uh, first step and I certainly support it. And um, I'm hopeful that as we move into the new year, we'll be able to continue to look at opportunities as they present themselves to appropriately, uh, to continue to appropriately compensate our employees because unfortunately, we're not through the, this yet. Although there's light at the end of the tunnel, the struggle continues. Um, so as those opportunities to revisit these type of issues present themselves, um, I'm hopeful that the council and the administration will be able to continue to work together to identify those opportunities and make them happen. And with that, I will call for the question. Question. Madam Clerk, would you please pull the council? Mrs. DeMade? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Mr. Hazen? Are we losing? I think so. I think we may have lost, we lost Mr. Hazen. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hixenbaugh? Yes. The vote will be recorded as eight to zero in favor. Proposed ordinance number 2020-49, an ordinance declaring an emergency and transferring and reappropriating funds within the budget adopted for the calendar year ending December 31st, 2020. Requesting second reading on this as well. This is an amendment to the 2020 Civil City Salary Ordinance. Thank you. At this time, the chair will entertain a motion to waive our standing council rules and conduct first and second reading this evening of proposed ordinance number 2020-49. So moved. Second. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded to suspend our standing council rules and conduct first and second reading of proposed ordinance number 2020-49 this evening. Any questions or comments from the council? If not, then Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. DeMade? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. I'm gonna give Mr. Hazen another shout. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hicksonbaugh? Yes. 
And then I would just have a technical question. I, Tony is not on here. It has to be unanimous of the those here voting. So he has disappeared off of our screen. So I'm assuming that we're okay. I concur. Good question, though. Thank you. With that clarification, then we will move into second reading and public hearing our proposed ordinance number 2020-49. Anyone here physically present who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance, please come forward. Good evening, Madam Controller. Mr. President, members of the council, I appreciate you allowing first and second reading tonight for this transfer. Um, as uh, Mayor Wood spoke, uh, we need to move some funds around to pay the stipend. And the majority of all the departments have funds available in their travel and training line. Whereas fire, police, central services, and street are able to use their personal services and benefits line. So this transfer, this ordinance is for the transfer of the departments in the general fund that need to transfer from um, their travel and training lines and two departments are using um, services and charges and subscriptions and dues. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Any questions for the controller? Not a question, but a comment. If you would, please pass along our appreciation to those who are going to have to do the heavy lifting to make sure that all of this ends up in those final paychecks for the year. We appreciate their work I certainly on this will. as well. Thank you. That's Wednesday, right? It is in two days. <laughs> Let the record show that Mr. Emmons is concerned on one payday as in the city of Mishawaka. So thank you for that clarification. Any other questions or comments for the controller? Thank you, Becky. Thank you. Is there anyone else physically present who wishes to speak in favor? Please come forward. Mr. President, Council Members, Dave Wood Mayor, just uh, briefly, I think I misspoke. I think I said 750, 600. It should be 625 for the uh, for the uh, Central Services Department, Sewer Department. So I just want to clarify that. And uh, do want to thank uh, the controller's office as well for uh, really coming up with a, a good strategy to, to pull this off. Like I said, I had to perform a couple of minor miracles to, to get this done on time, but uh, uh, they, they do an outstanding job in that office. And, um, you know, that's, it, we provide world-class services. It takes world-class people to do that. And this, again, just another uh, way to appreciate the, the good people that, that we have here, um, second to none. So thanks very much. Thank you. Any questions or comments for his honor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else physically present who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance, if you would, please come forward. Seeing no one, is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance? If you would, please unmute your microphone. We will then move into anyone physically present who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance, please come forward. And then also invite anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance to unmute their microphone. Are there any council members who wish to speak? If not, then I call for the question. Before you do, I'm getting text messages from Mr. Hazen. He's voting. I'm not sure. Councilor, you want to chime in on uh, text voting? Okay, he's, and I believe that the vote was for the suspension of the rules, but I'm waiting to hear from him. Back. He's trying to get back on. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Did you want me to move forward? Well, Mr. Mr. Triple, what's your opinion on whether we could proceed and allow Mr. Hazen's votes to be counted as part of the record of these proceedings as he's able to communicate by text? Okay. Okay. He's clearly he's participating in, in, and he has audio. So, all right. The Madam Clerk, uh, thank you, Mr. Triple. Madam Clerk, if you would please poll the council. Mrs. DeMade? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. yes. Mr. Hazen? Mr. Mamalenti? 
Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hicksonborough? Yes. I don't know if it's eight. Let's call it nine to nothing and we'll <laughs> clean it up after. It's just going to be one of those nights, I have a feeling. It is. <clears throat> I just ran out of ink in my pen, too. So I have an extra one if you need one. <laughs> Thank you. We'll now move into resolutions. Yes, Mr. President, we have resolution number R2020-25, a resolution approving renewal of a waste removal contract. Thank you. Um, as the council um, is aware, we have received communication from Mr. Hinkle Corporation Council advising of of an amendment to this resolution as originally proposed that has been acted upon by our Board of Public Works at our last meeting on Tuesday. So at this point in time, the chair would entertain a motion to delete the uh, proposed resolution as originally submitted and substitute in the amended resolution as has been transmitted to us by Corporation Council via the City Clerk. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and made and seconded to delete uh, the original resolution 20-25 as proposed and substitute in the amended uh, resolution received from Corporation Council. Any questions or comments from the Council? Hearing none, then Madam Clerk, would you please pull the Council? Mrs. DeMade? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Welcome back. Yes. Mr. Mavalenti? <laughs> yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hicksonbaugh? Yes. That is definitely a nine to zero. All right, we're oh. back at it. And with that, we will move into a public hearing on proposed resolution 2020-25 as amended. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed resolution, if you would, please come forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Mr. President, members of the council, my name is Tim Ryan. I'm the director of Central Services for the city of Mishawaka. Uh, I had the dubious honor of being selected to negotiate for the administration with uh, Republic Services. Um, it was about a nine month process without its hurdles and pitfalls as everything else. But at this time, as the resolution is presented to the council, I would recommend your favorable vote on this. Thank you. Um, before I open uh, up the floor to questions from the council, um, just for clarity in the record, uh, could you speak to the amendment that we just approved and summarize what it was? That the amendment like came on December 11th um, and I actually didn't have any knowledge of it. Um, until I actually got it from Republic Services, but it was another reduction from the original amendment in the uh, pricing for uh, trash services. It reduced it on an average over four years for uh, about 11 and a half cents over four years per year, per month, I should say, for the regular rate and seven and a half percent for the senior rate <laughs> over the course of monthly for four years. That's the average. It was anywhere between 11 and 12 percent and seven and eight percent. Or cents, I'm sorry, cents, not Thank percentages. I understood. I appreciate the clarification. And with that, are there any questions for Mr. Ryan? Mrs. Volker. Thank you. Just a quick one, um, Mr. Ryan. I just want to clarify or make sure that I'm reading, understanding this correctly, that recycling will continue to be picked up weekly. Correct? Recycling. All our services remain the same. Um, what we found out, Pat, Corporate Council Hinkle and myself, as we did research with other communities, what you're seeing um, is a trend of recycling in other communities going bi-weekly, if not being eliminated at all. And also um, renewing or bidding out contracts, I should say, has gone up anywhere from, you know, dollar, dollar fifty up to four or five dollars monthly and getting less service. So uh, with the way recycling is going today, the China sword, which we had that education on August 8th, I believe. Um, recycling isn't going the way it used to 10, 15 years ago. So 
we're, I consider us lucky to be able to keep it weekly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I do too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Volker. Other questions for <clears throat> Mr. Ryan? Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else physically present who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed resolution as amended? If you would, please come forward. Good evening, Mr. President. Thank you for having me today. My name is Cody Humphrey, General Manager for Republic Services. I'd like to thank the citizens of Mishawaka, all city staff members, and the council for allowing us to be your partner. Uh, it's truly an honor. And it, it's one of those things that's also behind the scenes, as the mayor mentioned. We have 19 employees that are dedicated to service this great city from our drivers to technicians to support staff like myself. And I can tell you that each one of us does not take this honor for granted. So I wanna thank you today. I'd also like to thank um, the city council. As Tim mentioned, this has been a nine to 10 month process. Each of you have been very professional um, in these negotiations and discussions and I do appreciate that. And I'd like to just quickly highlight uh, kind of how we got to where we're at today. On August 10th, we presented industry challenges around commodity values through, through the China sword, as Tim mentioned, and also COVID-19. As many people are home, the weights of the trash are much heavier, um, and that does impact our costs. Um, based on that meeting, we took the council's input and truly listened, and with that, came back with a four-year extension um, pricing on August 20th. We also provided a one-year extension, just understanding that this takes a lot of time and each of you have a ton on your plate, especially with our, the COVID-19 environment that we're uh, in today. And then just last week, continuing to, to speak with each of you individually, we came back with another $130,000 reduction on that four-year extension. But again, I just want to thank each of you. Um, I'll be here for questions. And uh, my hope is that we can continue this partnership for another four years. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the council? Mrs. Volker. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Humphrey. I had, um, first I wanna thank you for um, continuing with the weekly recycling. <clears throat> I happen to be um, your customer that fills that recycling bin every week, but um, <clears throat> One of the reasons I wanted to bring it up today, and I think I brought this up when we were together in August, I learned a lot with the presentation that you made regarding what is um, acceptable materials to be recycled. And I would, my comment and request would be that you use this opportunity somehow to educate the public, whether it's, you know, doing social media education, whether it's using you know, working with the mayor to use the communicator, um, maybe providing information yourself. One of the things that um, a competitor of yours does, um, they annually mail a postcard out that shows, in their case, it's twice a month, but the, the pickup dates, but more importantly, they, the post indicates what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in a pictorial format, which I think would be handy to stick on your refrigerator or bulletin, bulletin board and might be helpful for you yes. um, as you, you know, move forward with the contract. So those are my comments, but thank you very much for working with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And that's certainly something that we can do uh, for those of you tuning in online and, and here in person. RecyclingSimplified.com is also an excellent um, resource that can guide you through that uh, process that can be intimidating. We would certainly do the paperwork. I, I, so my point, I guess just to follow up, sure. I just don't think people are going to go there. Maybe yeah. kids in school are going to go mm -hmm. there because their teacher tells them to go there, but I'm not going to go there. I mean, sure. maybe I would, but do you know what I mean? I yes, just don't I do. think that the general public is going to go to that website. I, <clears> I, I, and we have the material available. We would be more than happy to make that happen. Okay. Thank and I you. think it would be interesting if you provide the education to, you know, kind of judge it, see if it helps a little bit. Maybe you do it twice a year. I don't know, but I, th I hope it would be helpful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions from the council? Mr. Evans. Thank you, Mr. President. Just for clarification, uh, can you give me in for 2020, 
the rate for the regular and then the rate for the senior for the current rates current rate yes uh, 1386 for regular and 1109 for senior that's what I have written down here mm -hmm. thank you no, hold it just a minute 13. yes sir and then for 2021 when you start in January yes the rate for regular the rate for regular would be fourteen dollars and sixty six cents sixty six yes sir and the senior rate would be eleven dollars and seventy four cents okay thank you yes sir and that is a increase of what percentage i don't have that off the top of my head um i could quickly calculate that if you'll give me a, a moment that's that's fine i mean i didn't want to put you on the spot my partner says five and a half percent Okay, from 20 to 21. Yes, sir. I will note that we've gone several years without an increase. Typically, we front load the contract. Just um, with the nature of our business, this is what we feel we need to continue to offer the reliable service the city of Mishawaka has grown accustomed to. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Other questions <clears throat> from the council? Just one clarification. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Compton. Thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Humphrey, first of all, I want to tell you, I think that your company provides a good service for the city of Mishawaka. Thank you. We've been through some issues and, you know, moving the trash to the and, and recycling to the street. And, and I thought that would be a problem. And it's, it, it seems to have worked out pretty well. I appreciate what you do. Your drivers are attentive, um, and, and the work you do is good work. But there's always buts. Um, this has nothing to do with you directly, um, but I think we should be. I think city government handing, giving a contract to a vendor for as long as you've had it is not good policy. Um, I don't think it looks good in the eyes of the community, and it would look, wouldn't look good to me if I was out there. It wouldn't look good to you if you were out there looking at this, reading about it, and this contract extension that now is 10 plus years when it's as over. Um, and what really disturbs me is that the reasons I hear we're not going to do this is we're concerned we won't be able to get as good a rate as what we're getting now. And that that really disturbs me. To me, that's a negotiator. That's a, 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 a that you're putting in an RFP. Your pencil should be as sharp as it ever is. And if that's truly what's going on with uh, Republic, then I'm really disturbed. Now, that all said, I'm going to support this. Only because I don't want to see trash piling up around the first of the year, because I'm not sure what would happen if I didn't. I'm inclined not to. I will tell the administration if I'm here in four years, I will not support this. Don't do this to us. Don't, please don't come at the time when we can't do anything, when here we are. Now, I know we've been working on this a while, and I, I know, but I think the council should have been involved in this sooner, and I think we should have had a little bit more say so in it. We're the ones that are going to accept or reject this. We're not in the negotiation process. I get it. But we're the ones that are going to accept or reject the negotiation. So if I'm here in four years, which truthfully, I hope I'm not, but <laughs> if I am, and I know some of these people will likely be here in four years, they're not going to forget this. So, and, I'm, and I ask the administration to remember the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Compton. Other questions and comments? Just a few follow-ups. Um, you made reference to the prior four-year agreement and that there wasn't a, a, a cost increase during that agreement. Isn't it a fair statement, though, that that was a, an agreement that you negotiated with the city and that there wasn't a unilateral price increase that was built into that agreement on the part of the city. In other words, 
the price didn't didn't rise over the four years because that's the deal that you entered into after good faith negotiations with the city of Mishawaka. That's true. Yeah. Okay. And then with regard to the one year extension that you referenced, that you uh, uh, and your company also proposed to this city, this council, this administration. Do you happen to recall what the proposed rate increase was that you suggested for that one year extension that would have allowed us to go through a public bidding process? On the top of my head, I do not have that percentage. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you do, but if, I... Well, uh, let me refresh your memory then. If okay. I were to indicate to you that it represented about a 12.77% increase, does that refresh your memory? That, that sounds like it would be that on. The, yes. Uh, with a shorter term agreement, you have less time to cover your capital assets. Um, and then also, you know, if, if you recall from the August 20th meeting, I believe it was, maybe August 8th, you know, we really talked about the China sword and, and how it has been a major impact to not just us, but the entire industry. Mm -hmm. And back in the good days of commodities, we were bringing in 40 bucks a ton on, on that and $38 of that would go to the city. In this case, it's a 200% change where we're actually paying up to $55, $45, and we're taking that total. So the model has completely flipped, and not just here in the city of Mishawaka, across our country. So you are correct, um, and th it was a larger percent for the year one, but we have less time to cover our assets. And would you agree with me also that that 12.77% increase that was proposed in the one-year option is about half again as much as where we're ending up with year one of the four-year extension that's before this council this evening? Is yeah, that accurate? I would agree that with that. Okay. Thank you, President. And, you know, last question for me. With regard to the four-year agreement that we just uh, actually strike that. So with regard to uh, this proposal before us, and I appreciate the information that you've shared with us. I'm like Mrs. Volker. I found that first meeting to be very educational, and you provide a lot of information that I at least wasn't aware of, and I suspect others felt the same way. Um, but just to be clear, you're not indicating to us that under the four-year agreement that's been proposed to us that Republic isn't going to make any profit on this contract, are you? Of course. We are a for-profit contract and our company, and we, we have to, in order to make recycling sustainable for everyone, we do have to make a profit. Is that your question? Did that, is, that is my question, and I appreciate that answer. And to, to that point of profit, um, under Indiana law, typically, but for the fact that we're extending with a current vendor, my understanding of the statute, and I have it here, is that any contract where gross revenues would exceed $25,000 in a different circumstance would be subject to a public, public bidding product, or a process. So um, is it a fair conclusion for us to draw that over the life of this four-year agreement that Republic stands to enjoy greater than $25,000 worth of gross revenue? Gross revenue, not net revenue, but gross revenue. I can answer that question as to yes, but as far as the legal portion of that and how it's interpreted. I wasn't asking you about the legality. I was asking you about the revenue. Number. Yes, it would go up more than 25000 over okay. the period of the contract. Thank you. I appreciate those clarifications. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. And thank you again for your willingness to take a look at the pricing again and be yes. responsive to our concerns. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed resolution as amended? If you would, please come forward to the podium. Then we will invite anyone who is participating remotely to unmute their microphone and speak in favor of proposed resolution 2020-25 as amended. We will then move into anyone who's physically present who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed resolution. If you would, please come forward. And then we'll offer the opportunity to anyone who is participating remotely to unmute their microphone and speak in opposition to proposed resolution 2020-25. Thank you. Are there any council members who wish to speak? Mr. Reynolds. 
if somebody came in, I'll, you want to defer to? Yeah, I'll defer to somebody. Mr. Hazen, was that you? It was me, Mr. Mamalenti. Ah, Mr. Mamalenti, I'm, I apologize. Uh, thank you. The floor That's is all right. I, that's all right. I was given the opportunity to the uh, council members in prison first, but uh, if Mr. Emmons bows uh, and gives his blessing, I will proceed if that's all right with you, Mr. President. Please do so. Okay, thank you. I'd just like to take this time to uh, thank Mr. Humphrey, uh, uh, Mr. Ryan, the Board of Public Works for, for working on this behind the scenes so diligently. And, uh, you know, when time came, bring us involved and get us up to speed. Um, I, I will start off with saying, um, with, with the exception of a few minor hiccups, I think Republic has done an outstanding job. Um, you can almost set your bell to when, the, when you're going to hear the brakes uh, on the recycling truck in the morning uh, and shortly followed up by the, by the trash truck, at least in, in my district. Um, as, I, as I mentioned before, with the exception of a few hiccups, I think they've done a tremendous job the staff, the drivers, et cetera. Um, with that being said, um, in my day job, I, I sell commodities. So I also understand uh, the inflection of prices and the pickle and how the market has, has flipped um, re regarding the recycling. With that being said, I also am subject to submit RFQs to several of my customers. And when those do come out, I do find the, uh, the necessity, if I want to retain that business, that I need to sharpen the pencil because I know other, other uh, suppliers or distributors or competitors are going to come in with their lowest and best price as well. So with that being said, it has nothing to do uh, with, with, with the service or lack thereof of a republic. I just feel that it's in, in the ratepayers and the citizens of Mishawaka's best interest that we put it out to bid and give other uh, vendors um, a chance to sharpen their pencils in hopes that we can provide a cost savings to our ratepayers and our citizens. Um, I, I know that there is a risk to that, that it may come in higher than the proposal that Republic has set forth, but given the fact that we've extended this contract um, several years, I think uh, uh, it comes down to perception. Are we doing the best that we can do for the inter interest for our citizens and, and ratepayers? So with all that being said, if you can make sense of anything that I said here remotely, um, I, Tough decision will be made, but I will be voting in opposition to this extension this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mamalenti. Um, since we've started with our colleagues who are participating remotely, are there any other council members participating remotely who wish to speak at this point? Mr. President, Mr. Benicki. Mr. Benicki, the floor is yours. Thank you, sir. I would just like to uh, echo Mr. Compton and Mr. Mamalenti's uh, comments about <clears throat> going out to bid. Um, I think that there's, in four years, there's plenty of time to put it out for bid. If you got to start putting it out for bid right now to get that bid in four years, then that's what we need to do. Somebody dropped the ball. Uh, this just shouldn't happen. Should, like Mr. Compton said, if I didn't think that all the neighbors would throw their trash in my front yard because of lack of pickup, I would vote no. I just, I just think this is a disservice that this it's supposed to go out to bid. That's what we should do. And, and somebody dropped the ball. Um, because I don't want my front yard full of trash, I will be supporting it. But like Mr. Compton said, in four years, if I'm here, I would vote absolutely no. And even if I'm not here, and as a citizen, I would, I would chime in and say, don't do it. Because it's not the right thing. So I think that that you know, hopefully this doesn't fall on deaf ears and that people realize we need to do the right thing and get these bids, even if we got to start tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Benicki. Mr. Emmons? Not hearing anything from Mr. Hazen. I'll assume that he doesn't wish to comment at this point in time. We'll catch up with him later if he does. You've been very patient, so the floor is yours, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on this contract, I was one of the first to say, you know, extend the contract because I've done it with 
the solid waste in South Bend, what we ran into when we put it out for bid. But when I said this and supported the four-year extension, my thing was there should be no rate increase the first year. Then your rate goes the second, third, and fourth year, both for senior and for the regular customer. And since that wasn't met, I have a problem with the rate increase. <clears throat> Even though it's a minor, what you say, 5%, 5.5%, it, it's still a rate increase, especially when the city is going through rate increases on other projects, water and electric. And with the pandemic, we have a lot of people, especially in my area, people that are unemployed, they're not making the money that they did, and a lot of them, when they were making money, weren't making what a lot of other people were, were bringing in. So I have a concern about that. And as I said, I would have been here to voice A for accepting the contract for if it had been the price uh, for 2021 as it is in 2020. But since that's not available, then I feel I'm going to be able to support it. Also, I would commend you guys for your service. As the people have said, there have been a few hiccups, but nothing major. And I appreciate that. When I've seen a problem out on the street, I've called in and it's taken care of. I called in today and it was taken care of. And I appreciate that. Not only do I appreciate that, but the customers in my district appreciate that. And, that, and what I say, we don't like to have trash or large items sitting around for a week or two weeks after the pickup. So I commend you for, for doing that. So right now, the way it stands, I will not be able to support this contract. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emmons. Other comments from the council? Um, I, I, I will um, add a few myself then. Uh, I, I agree with the points that have been made by others. You know, first and foremost, I want to express some appreciation to Mr. Ryan and Mr. Hinkle for the work that they did on this. Mr. Ryan in particular, I suspect uh, was not, it was not his lifelong dream to take on the glamorous responsibility of leading this round of negotiations, um, but you did a fine job. Um, and I appreciate the work that both of you gentlemen have, have put in. Um, I will also say that to a certain extent, with regard to the process and how we ended up here this evening, I'm willing to almost assign a mulligan, if, if you will, because I think COVID really impacted the normal rhythm here and what we would have been able to do. So it, I think it's fair to acknowledge that. Um, I have some other concerns, but I'll get to those in a moment. But before I do, I also want to, again, reiterate my appreciation to Republic for the service that they provide. Like my colleagues, it is a fact that I do not receive any phone calls complaining about the service, which is unique in terms of the history of the trash and recycling contract. So your folks are doing some great work on our behalf, and it's much appreciated. Um, and uh, there is a lot to be said here. Again, I appreciate uh, the fact that going back to our earliest discussions that you heard from the council that we weren't in favor of a 10-year agreement that would carry with it a reduction in our recycling services. You refined your proposal. Once we, had, uh, we got further into the process, you went back to your pricing. And I do appreciate the fact that you um, sharpened your pencil somewhat with regard to that pricing. So there are a lot of things that are positive with regard to the outcome and what's in front of us uh, this evening. What I don't find to be as positive is, as Mr. Compton in particular noted, here we are with 2008 having been the last time that we went through a competitive bidding process. Again, COVID impacted perhaps what we would have done this year, um, and I'm willing to acknowledge that. But the sticking point in my mind is that dollar amount that was proposed from Repub by Republic <laughs> with regard to that one-year extension. And I appreciate the clarification earlier and the acknowledgement that if, in fact, we had um, been interested as a council, as a community, in exploring the state-approved, readily available public bidding process that takes place across the state of Indiana, even in a pandemic, 
it would have come at a burdensome one-year increase that I have difficulty reconciling from the standpoint of a business case. If in, as we heard earlier, the one-year proposal carried a 12.77% increase that has no correlation to the same costs that are proposed in this four-year agreement. I have uh, uh, no uh, option but to conclude that it was an act of corporate hardball or even bullying to try to uh, preclude us as a community from being able to extend for one year, have trash and recycling service proceed uninterrupted, and go through that um, bidding process where Republic, quite frankly, I think would have stood to have the inside track since they're the current vendor. And the shame of it is that we have other vendors who have reached out to us and have expressed some interest. And we as a community will never know if there was a better deal for us out there because we've been denied the opportunity to extend and go through that bidding process based upon the proposals that we've received from, uh, from Republic. So while it may benefit their business, business bottom line, I cannot at all conclude that that's in the best interest of the city of Mishawaka. And while it be a, may be a, a good outcome for Republic for us to approve this uh, agreement. And while I'll acknowledge that the, the concerns expressed by my colleagues with regard to trash mounting up in the city of Mishawaka are concerning to me, I'm forced to conclude that while this may be good for Republic to extend this, this is not good government and it's not in the best interest of the city of Mishawaka for us to uh, extend this contract under these circumstances. So I will be voting no on this matter this evening. And. Yes, Mrs. Cl I, hate you know, I told you I wasn't going to be quiet all night. Um, I, I've got a caller that's trying that has been trying to speak and was having difficulty. He hung up. He called back in. He is asking to be able to be listened to. And I don't know about anybody else, but I still have a circle of death on my screen right now with regard to this transmission. So it does make sense to me that we've had some technological difficulties. So with um, uh, uh, the approval of the council. I think I will open the floor up for any additional public comments that anyone wishes to make. So, unnamed caller, if you would, please unmute your microphone and begin by stating your name and address for the record. Uh, good evening. This is Kyle Woolsey, Director of Sales, Board and Waste Away. My address is 2626 Greenleaf Boulevard, Elkhart, Indiana. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to uh, just address the council briefly, if I could, um, in regards to the pending renewal of your waste and recycling contract. Uh, the first thing I would like to point out is that uh, we also have valued municipal contracts uh, that under no circumstance, if the uh, valued customer or municipality wanted to uh, go out for competitive bid, and not extend a contract, would we would we discontinue our service? So I think it's fair noting that the council seems to be reluctant to um, go out for competitive bid at this point, just simply because of the concern of, of, as you say, trash ending up in the front yard. I think it's a fair question for for the incumbent to, to, to state whether or not they would discontinue service, knowing that it's such a, a hinging point in the decision. I don't know if, if that will be answered this evening, but I'll take the rest of my time to um, provide an outline on board and waste away and, and <laughs> where we stand in this. Uh, we are a, are a competitor. Um, we would be eager to provide a competitive, propo competitive proposal um, for your waste and recycling services. We did attend the August 10th um, WebEx between Republic Services and the city of Mishawaka, and at that time we echoed uh, the concern about the recycling markets, we, we feel the same thing. However, um, after a review of your current rates at the city of Mishawaka, regardless of uh, recycling markets, we've noted that um, the price that the residents of Mishawaka are paying currently, and that's without any increase, is, uh, is not in line with competitive rates. And so with that in mind, uh, we followed up with a letter on the, and on September 1st to, to outline our uh, enthusiasm to provide a proposal and uh, reference that we, we did believe we would provide a proposal that would that would provide savings. Now, to, to back that up, we followed up with the November 25th letter to the council, 
in that letter, we did want to make sure that the council was confident that at this time, Board and Waste Away would provide a four-year contract if it did go out for bid so that there's no guessing or wondering at 1386, which is your current rate, and we would lock that in for four years for, for basic service. We'd also be at 1109 for senior residents. That's, that's uh, the same as your current rate. We would also provide free service for police officers and firefighters. And um, with that being said, if, if you take that math out, just over the course of the first year, that's $129,000 for your residents. Take that out over four years. With our price locked at current rates, it's $1.2 million. Uh, now that number was prior to the, to the discount that was um, brought with the, uh, the change in their new proposal, which sounds like that would credit off around $100,000. All this to be said, we are a competitor in the market um, and we can provide a competitive proposal if given the opportunity. So I think it's fair to note that I, I, I would hope that the incumbent would not uh, leave trash at your curb if, if they are a valued partner in your community. And uh, I, hope that's, I hope that's received well and I hope that uh, you know that I say this with uh, all due respect and that is all I have, thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Woolsey? <coughs> Thank you, sir. If you would, please uh, mm -hmm. mute your microphone once again. Thank you all. You're welcome. And then since we uh, extended the opportunity to uh, Mr. Woolsey, if there is anyone else participating remotely who ran into technical difficulties and wishes to speak with respect to the proposed resolution, if you would, please unmute your microphone and state your name and address for the record. Hearing none, then if memory serves, um, prior to Mr. Woolsey's comment, I was prepared to call for the question unless there are any other comments from the council. And hearing none, I will call for the question. Question. Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. DeMaid? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? No. Mr. Emmons? No. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hicksma? No. <coughs> the proposed resolution as amended passes 6 to 3. Resolution R 2020-26, a resolution of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka, Indiana, approving a petition of the Mishawaka Board of Zoning Appeals for the property located at 823 East 3rd Street, Mishawaka, Indiana. This is a use variance to maintain three units in R1 single family residential district at 823 East 3rd Street. Thank you. This is a public hearing on proposed resolution 2020-26. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? <laughs> who is physically present, if you would, please come forward to the podium and begin by stating your name and address for the record. Since I see no one and I hear a beep on the phone, I will now inquire as to whether there is anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in favor of proposed resolution 2020-26, which has to do with 823 East 3rd Street in Mishawaka. Again, is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak with respect to 823 East 3rd Street? I'm not seeing anyone on. I don't think so either. At this point then, in the absence of the petitioner, the chair would entertain a motion. Mrs. Volker. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we postpone uh, the um, voting on this resolution, uh, R2020-26, until we're able to hear from the homeowner. I think if you, you'd be safe to say next meeting, I, I'm sure it's some kind of miscommunication. I was gonna say, so Mrs. Volker has currently stated your most motion would be to postpone it indefinitely. And the clerk's suggestion is that if you were, if you would entertain that, you, you could. That's fine. Uh, Mr. President. Thank you. I think we have somebody out there. But... Are you here? Please come forward then, sir. <laughs> and you've been so patient there in the back of the room. We appreciate it. 
All right, so then we will move back into the public hearing on proposed resolution 2020 26. Although, thank you, Mrs. Volker, for your, for your motion. And this has to do with 823 East 3rd Street. And, sir, if you would begin by stating your name and address for the record. Stephen Van Damme, 1619 Rockwood Lane, Michoaca, 46545. Thank you, sir. What can you tell us about? Well, I bought the property in 81, and before that, it's been a three apartments since the early 60s. Okay. I'm just asking for a variance so I can get it up to date and everything. All right, very well. Are there any questions from the council? Mr. Compton. Do you, you own this property, sir? Yes. And you, you rent it out? Yes. And um, what's the need for the, the variance at this moment? Are you trying to get a loan or are you? Yes. Pardon me? Yes. Okay, so that's the need as you're yes. trying, and it's not zoned properly. Yes, it, I thought it was zoned when I bought it, but it was not. Well, you'll find that there's a lot of these in Mishawaka that are just this way that go back prior to the, the requirement. And I also understand so I have we, to, we see a couple of these a month, actually, or it seems like it lately anyway. Mm -hmm. But so thank you very much, sir. Appreciate the information. Thank you. Are there any other questions for the appellant? A um, couple comments, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, that's a really good looking city of Mishawaka Central oh. Services sweatshirt that you have on there. So congratulations on that. Number two, um, I appreciate the work that you did to solicit those letters from the surrounding neighbors, mm -hmm. not that we wouldn't believe you with regard to how long that the property has been used in this capacity, but that was really helpful to have that information submitted as well. So thanks for taking the time to do that. And unless there's anything else that you'd like to add? Um, uh, I have to pave the parking lot, but I can't do that until April, until they start making asphalt again. Good point. And um, my assumption would be that you don't have any objection to doing that when the weather breaks and you're able to do that. Yeah, as soon as I've got a contractor lined up now to do it. Fantastic. We appreciate that. All right, any other questions for this gentleman? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of proposed resolution 2020-26? If you would, please come forward to the podium. Seeing no one, if there's anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of this proposed resolution who is participating remotely, if you would, please unmute your microphone. We will then ask if there is anyone physically present who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed resolution. If you would, please come forward. And then also inquire whether there is anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed resolution. Are there any council members who wish to speak? If not, then I call for the question. Question. Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. Demade? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hixenbach? Yes. Post resolution passes 9 to 0. Ordinances on second reading. Yes, Mr. President, we have proposed ordinance number 2020-45. An ordinance declaring an emergency and transferring and reappropriating funds within the budget adopted for the calendar year ending December 31st, 2020. This is a transfer of funds in the general fund in the amount of $50,000. Thank you. May we have the committee report, please? Yes, Mr. President. To the members of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka, your Committee on Budget and Finance, to whom was referred the matter of proposed ordinance number 2020-45, report that they have examined said matter and that in their opinion it should be adopted. This is signed by the entire committee and I move for its acceptance. Second. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded to um, accept the committee report. Um, any questions or comments from the council? If not, then Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. Demade? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Emmons? 
Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hicksonbaugh? Yes. Committee report passes 9 to 0. Thank you. This is the second reading of public hearing on proposed ordinance number 2020 45. Anyone wishing to speak in favor, please come forward. Good evening again, Madam Controller. Good evening. Um, I have a transfer here asking for approval. Our insurance claims line, which pays for liability and workers' comp and property insurance, um, went over budget this year, mostly due to um, our, our workers' comp went up some and also ensuring the new Liberty Mutual building were the two largest expenses. So we are transferring money from our health insurance line to our insurance and claims line. Thank you. Any questions for the controller? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else, else who wishes to speak in favor of proposed ordinance number 2020-45? If you would, please come forward to the podium. Then is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in favor of proposed ordinance number 2020-45? If you would, please unmute your <laughs> microphone. Is there anyone physically present who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance? If you would, please come forward. And then is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance? Are there any council members who wish to speak? If not, then I call for the question. 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 Madam Clerk, would you please pull the council? Mrs. Demade? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hicksonbaugh? Yes. Proposed ordinance passes 9 to 0. Proposed ordinance number 2020-46 and ordinance amending ordinance 5712 fixing the salaries of all employees of the city of Mishawaka except Mishawaka Park Department elected officials in the Mishawaka Utilities for the city of Mishawaka, Indiana for the year beginning January 1st, 2021. And there is a request for an amendment. Thank you. At this time, the chair would entertain a motion to delete uh, the original draft or proposed ordinance number 2020 as received and to instead substitute in the amended ordinance as was received through the hard work of the clerk this afternoon um, and the controller so that we can accurately reflect the outcome of our public safety negotiations. So moved. Second. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded to delete in the entirety the original draft or proposed ordinance number 2020-46 and substitute it in an amendment as prepared by the controller and transmitted to us via the city clerk. Any questions or comments from the council? If not, then Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? This is on the amendment. On the amendment. Mrs. DeMaid? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hicksonbaugh? Yes. The amendment passes 9 to 0. Thank you. We will then move into the second reading and public hearing of proposed ordinance number 2020 46 as amended. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the ordinance, if you would, please come forward. I promise it's my last time. <laughs> um, what we have here for your approval tonight is the amendment to reflect what was agreed upon in the negotiations for police and one item from fire as well. Would you like me to go over the items or? If you want to summarize briefly or else I, you know, we can do that later. Um, briefly, um, Negotiated package 2.25% wage increase, 1% pension um, contribution decrease, one time $500 stipend. Um, city residents on the police force get an additional $750 stipend. Additional rank pay has been added to the sergeant at 
$750, Lieutenant $1,100, and the Captain $1,500. And as I mentioned, uh, a fire item that was negotiated prior, the uh, first class firefighter in 2021 will have the same biweekly pay as a first class police officer. Thank you. Any questions for the controller? Before you go sit down again, hopefully for your sake, like to say for the last time this evening and not have to come back. Um, I want to thank you again for the assistance that you provided us as well as Mr. Hinkle throughout the negotiation process. I'm sure I speak on behalf of all of us that it was very, very beneficial and we appreciated you making the time to uh, participate. So You're welcome. I appreciate being included. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of proposed ordinance number 2020-46 as amended? If you would, please come forward. Seeing no one, is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in favor of proposed ordinance number 2020-46 as amended? We will then inquire as to whether there's anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance. If you would, please come forward. And then is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak in opposition to the proposed ordinance as amended? If you would, please unmute your microphone. Are there any council members who wish to speak? To add to the thank yous, I want to acknowledge the hard work that was done by the uh, FOP bargaining team uh, throughout this process. Um, <laughs> And uh, we appreciate their input in arriving at a fair resolution. And then also I want to acknowledge, um, in addition to uh, Mrs. Miller and Mr. Uh, Hinkle on behalf of the administration, the work that was done by the council bargaining team, uh, Mr. Mamalenti and Mr. Hazen, and in particular, uh, Mr. Compton. Mr. Belovich also per participated regularly. Um, and I appreciate the, the work. We appreciate the work that all of you did. Um, as with uh, most other um, bargains that I have been involved with, um, I, each side wishes that they would have been able to accomplish uh, certain things, but I believe this to be a fair outcome and in the best interest of the community. So thanks you, uh, again to everybody involved, and um, I will be voting in favor of this this evening. And with that, if there are no other comments, then I will call for the question. Questions. Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council? Mrs. DeMade? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hicksonbaugh? Yes. The proposed ordinance as amended passes 920. Thank you. We will then move into privilege of the floor. At this time, members of the public are invited to the podium to speak with respect to non-agenda items only under privilege of the floor. And since no one physically present has availed themselves of that invitation, is there anyone participating remotely who wishes to speak under privilege of the floor? Thank you. We will then move into unfinished business. Yes, Mr. President. We have proposed ordinance number 2020-39, an ordinance of the City of Mishawaka authorizing the issuance of Waterworks revenue bonds for the purpose of providing funds to pay the cost of certain additions, extensions, and improvements to the municipal waterworks of said city, providing for the safeguarding of the interest of the owners of said bonds other matters connected therewith, including the issuance of notes in anticipation of bonds and repealing ordinances inconsistent herewith. And there is an amendment that's been requested. Thank you. At this point, the chair would entertain a motion to delete uh, proposed ordinance number 2020-39 uh, as originally presented and instead substitute in the amendment as uh, prepared by outside legal counsel and our financial consultants and transmitted to us via the city clerk's office. So moved, Mr. President. Sorry, Mike. Have a second, Mr. Belovich. Second. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded 
to uh, delete in its entirety proposed ordinance number 2020-39 as originally submitted and instead substitute in an amended ordinance as prepared by outside counsel and financial consultants and transmitted to us via the city clerk's office. Are there any questions or uh, comments from the council? If not, then Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council on the amendment? Mrs. DeMade? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hixenbaugh? Yes. The amendment passes 920. Thank you. And then with that, we will move into second reading and public hearing on proposed ordinance number 2020-39 as amended. Anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance, if you would, please come forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Mr. President. Um, if I could ask you to defer for a moment. We do have a committee report, yeah. um, so my apologies, Mr. Mayor, but um, may we have the committee report, please? Thank you, Mr. President. To the members of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka, your committee on budget and finance, to whom we referred to the matter, proposed ordinance 2020-39, report that they have examined said matter and that their opinion, it should be presented to the council as a whole. This is signed by the entire committee, and I move for its acceptance. Second. Thank you. A motion has been made and seconded to receive the committee report. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> if not, then Madam Clerk, would you please poll the council on the acceptance of the committee report? Mrs. DeMaid? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. yes. Mr. Hazen? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Ms. Volker? Yes. Mr. Hixenbaugh? Yes. Committee report passes 9 to 0. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Emmons, for backstopping me and catching that. I appreciate it. Now, with that, and with apologies to Mr. Mayor, we will move into this again into the second reading and public hearing on proposed ordinance number 2020 39 as amended. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I'm here to speak in favor of proposed ordinance number 20. Uh, 20 39. I'm also going to cover 2020 40, which are the uh, rates to make the bonds work. Uh, talked to you a little bit earlier about uh, our world class people uh, who provide exceptional services to our citizens. I'm here now to talk to you about some of the world class service that we provide. Uh, these are services uh, that I always mentioned that our citizens can take completely and totally for granted. And they never have to think about uh, when they turn on that spigot, turn on the faucet, if uh, clean, safe, potable drinking water will come out. Uh, never have to give that a passing thought because it always does. And with that comes a, a very uh, impressive team of people, some great facilities, and some substantial investments that we have to make to ensure that our water is, is first pumped out of the ground, then tested and cleaned and distributed uh, to the end user, our citizens. Uh, it's one of those services that local government provides that uh, is a necessity of life. You know, most of our focus is on the federal level now or even the state level, but it's here at the local level that we provide these services. And again, they're not, they're not taken lightly, they're not taken for granted by us, and they're not cheap. Uh, a lot of extensive planning go, goes into the services we provide, especially our utilities. And in this case of the water department, uh, you're gonna hear from Mr. Schrader, Mr. Julian, Mr. Majeski about uh, specifics uh, about what we're going to, what we're proposing, what we're asking. Uh, however, this is just not a one-off. We've been in uh, the planning for this for 10 years plus, and uh, we've dealt with the council for 10 years plus on, on these specific projects that are finally coming to fruition. You know, uh, of all of the things that we plan and that we have control over, uh, there's not much that keeps me up at night or uh, that gives 
that, that would give me concern because of the great people we have and the good plans we have in place. One area where we are potentially exposed, and especially now during a pandemic, is water on the north side, specifically our pressure. Uh, when you think about the critical infrastructure we have on the north side, and I'm not talking about our own, I'm talking about hospitals, veterans clinics, the healthcare uh, campus, and all of the uses that we have up there, uh, we have uh, no, uh, no, no, fundamentally no well field on the north side that serves it properly the way it needs to be served. And so part of our planning from way 10 years back was to better serve that growing part of town uh, with water that they can completely <laughs> take for granted. And so part of that is that we have to make major investments. We have to do things like uh, test water to see if we can acquire a well field and then acquire ground and then build filtration plants. And those projects that we then build in place have dominoes down the line. It's we need the well field so that we can um, supply the towers, the water towers that are needed in the, in the network. We need the well field so that we can turn off the other well field and renovate it. Uh, on the south side while still supplying water to all of our citizens. So it's a domino effect. And these things are very, very expensive, unfortunately. Uh, we still have some of the most competitive uh, rates in the state. Unfortunately, we have to uh, raise those from time to time to cover the expenses of maintaining our system. The good news is, is we do that. We have the courage to do it even in the face of unpopularity from time to time, because we know how vital, how important these changes, these investments are to our system, and we've always made them. And so we're here to ask you tonight, and I'm the first one to ask, because I support it, that we have to raise the rates to accomplish the projects that we need to do so that we can provide uninterrupted service uh, that our citizens can, again, totally take for granted <laughs> for the long term. Uh, we're blessed with an endless supply of water, but it's a heck of a lot of money, and we, we don't charge for our water, but we have to charge to test it. We have to charge to pull it out of the ground and to distribute it and all of the functions that, that we do. And so uh, we have uh, a list of projects that need to be accomplished. Um, we're uh getting to a point in time where uh a delay in one project delays many and so i'm here to ask for your support for this i know it's a big dollar amount um, but we were certainly um, conscious uh, of our citizens when we came up with this rate structure we know that we're in a, pa a pandemic and so we didn't want to burden our citizens early uh, and so they won't realize a, a uh, rate increase for a couple of more years uh, so that we can properly plan. And as you'll hear from me later, we're able to offset some of the rate increase with water with a rate decrease in electric that I'll talk to you about. Uh, because our citizens don't just necessarily pick out one water bill or one sewer bill or one electric bill, they see it as a Mishawaki Utilities billing statement where they pay one amount. And so overall, that amount is going to decrease for a while, and we're very proud about that. Um, but I would encourage you to support this. Uh, and uh, you have my sympathies. I sat in your seats, and they were never fun to do these things. Um, but, uh, but again, it, it takes courage to do it and, and vision knowing that we're here to serve long-term. These projects allow us to do that, and uh, this is where leadership counts. And so thank you very much. I'll take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any questions for Mayor Wood? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? If you would, please come forward. Mr. President, Council Members, um, Jim Schrader, uh, General Manager of Mishawaki Utilities. 
Um, as and I will echo a few of the things the mayor said and add a few more that you know, I hope we begin to realize some of the significant investments that need to be made in our infrastructure in order to accomplish what we do here in utilities and that is to ensure reliable safe uh, services to the residents in Mishawaka and the surrounding area in some cases based upon um, what's happened over the number of years in uh, in, the, in development. Uh, I will say that as the mayor mentioned this has been a project that we've been looking at for quite some time. Um, we looked at it earlier this year as a matter of fact and uh, and I told the mayor that some things needed to happen, uh, particularly on the water side, and we were negotiating a very, very good outcome on electric rates, which which came out very favorable for us. That, But the mayor said, well, we can't do, and, and, and I understood and, and certainly agreed with him. Uh, during the pandemic, the worst thing you can do is raise rates of um, essential services that people need. But since we were able to develop a very strong 10-year agreement on the electric side and realize when that went into effect in July and making sure that we realized those savings, which we did, um, and then it became apparent that we'd be able to offset some of the water increases that needed to happen to improve our infrastructure and build a new well field. Um, uh, the north, there is malls, there's two now two hospitals, to serve um, the the development continues and the development wouldn't happen if water and sewer services weren't available. So I think it's imperative that we um, move forward with these. Um, John Julian of uh, Baker Tilly is here. And next I want him to go over the financial analysis that was performed by them. And then I want Dave to touch on the projects so you get a, a an understanding and a magnitude of the number of things we're talking about that need to happen and they need to happen in order to do our job and uh, i'm not going to fall asleep at the wheel when uh, uh, these types of things need to happen we as the mayor said it does take courage to stand up and and do rate increases uh, good times bad times doesn't matter it's still money that needs to be spent by our citizens, but it's also money that is well thought, well planned, and well executed by our um, water department staff, outside consulting engineer, and financial analysis. So what I'd like to do is offer myself any questions you might have, and uh, then go through uh, the next steps of, of having John Julian an opportunity to discuss it from a financial perspective and affordability and all the things that go into that because and also the amended version that we're talking about this evening so you get a feel and a sense of what changes we were able to go back and rethink and re look at and uh, sort of ease the burden um, especially over the next two or three years any questions thank you mr schrader any questions for mr schrader all right thank you thank sir you. john Good evening, Mr. President, members of the council. John Julian, partner with uh, Baker Tilly. Um, Baker Tilly has had the privilege of uh, working with the city and developing a financial plan for the uh, for the utilities and the ordinance under consideration this evening. We're currently under consideration um, 2020-39 is one of the four ordinances that in effect um, uh, puts uh, in place the legislation to enact the uh, the financial plan. Uh, if I could, I'd like to give you a, a brief um, recap of what that financial plan is and how these ordinances fit into that picture. Um, I'll start if it's a I could have the um, uh, some leeway and and uh, go outside the specifics of this ordinance. Um, the city has for the last. A uh, decade or so utilized a uh, kind of a holistic approach to evaluating utilities, recognizing that um, uh, the city provides critical services in a number of ways under the, under the utility umbrella. Um, and from that philosophy, they've looked at 
uh, the needs of each of these departments, not only individually, but uh, as all three of the departments in whole, recognizing the customers that receive those services um, are, for the most part, receiving all, all the utility services. So movement in one area um, has uh, a corresponding impact of all the ratepayers. So from that approach, um, there's been a, uh, a financial plan put together that analyzes the needs, um, both in terms of operations, capital investments, and modifications, rates, and charges for all of those utilities at the same time. This uh, uh, discussion this evening is the most recent iteration of, of the, that fi multi-utility financial plan. And I'll start with the easy one first. Um, when we looked at the sewage works, um, we identified that um, the steps that were taken in the last um, uh, 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 financial plan, multi-year financial plan uh, for the utilities is adequate as we expected uh, to keep the sewage works functioning for the next several years without the need for any additional authorization of rates increases or any additional authorization for, um, for, for more bonds to, um, to fund capital investments. The sewage works is, is holding pat under the actions that were taken previously uh, um, back in 2017. Um, the electric utility, um, as J uh, Jim mentioned and the mayor has mentioned, um, has a new development from when the last multi-year plan was, um, was developed. Uh, as you're aware, the a very favorable wholesale purchase power contract has been um, negotiated, which uh, transition, um, created the opportunity for some substantial reductions in electric rates. And later in your agenda, you'll see the action of those. But I can tell you that that represents um, uh, a 7% reduction to be effective in 2021 and a 7% reduction to be effective in 2022. Um, percentages are easy to use but they also don't oftentimes tell the full story. You're probably well aware the largest single utility line item you have on your monthly bill is your electric <laughs> by far. So a 7% or a cumulative over 14% reduction in the uh, electric rates really sets the table um, for some things that are um, uh, have to be done in, in the water utility that otherwise would have a more substantial impact uh, than what we're proposing. Uh, and this is a new, uh, development that wasn't, uh, couldn't be anticipated when we did the multi-year plan back in 2017. Um, so um, that leaves us with the water. The, uh, the water utility um, uh, is at the point where there needs to be some significant capital investments that are, are going to be required. Um, it's a little bit different than uh, where we were in 2017, where the emphasis was heavy capital investment on the sewage works. And so um, this too is what was expected back in 17 uh, when we um, developed the financial plan that's being wrapped up now. Um, put it another way, it's kind of the water utilities turn to, to, to make these significant capital investments. And Dave is going to give you the more uh, thorough explanation of what those capital investments are. This ordinance that's um, under consideration now is the authorization to make those roughly $52 million worth of uh, capital improvements. For that to be done, um, there has to be an increase in rates and charges. Um, the next item on the, or on the uh, agenda is that rate ordinance. To fund the $52 million of capital investments, as well as take care of the normal day-to-day -day operations that uh, really mean uh, that your citizens receive those the reliable services that they've come to expect, as well as take care of existing debt that's outstanding, requires an increase. Um, and um, the way that uh, increase is structured is a 16% across the board adjustment would be implemented in 2022. 
um, that 16% is effectively offset by the 7% electric reduction that uh, is the other part of the financial plan. Um, the next step that the water utility needs to remain financially viable is an increase in 2023. And we've developed two alternatives to, um, to address those needs. Um, the way the ordinance that's under consideration was originally, uh, or will be under consideration, was originally drafted was to have a 14% uh, adjustment in 2023 that translates into about a uh, $5.50 uh, increase for the average residential um, uh, homeowner. Um, that five dollars and or that uh, fourteen percent or five dollar and fifteen or excuse me five dollar and fifty cent um, impact did two things one is it finished up the, the financial needs that the utility faces for the fifty two million dollar bond issue that's under consideration but it also set in place a revenue stream that would help the water utility in 2025, 2026, when the next round of, of significant capital projects are needed. In other words, we're kind of creating a softer um, uh, landing spot in 2024, 25, 26, when the next round of capital needs are, um, are required. That was the financial plan it was initially proposed uh, as a result of that, we were anticipating when that next round of significant capital projects were required, we'd be able to do that without increase or with a nominal increase um, because we didn't think we'd have to do a bond issue or, or much of a, certainly at a bond issue, nothing close to what is being proposed currently. Um, but the, but the, the cost of that is a uh, $5.50 increase in 2023 for the average residential homeowner. That's not the only financial plan that's possible. Um, and so we uh, uh, constructed an alternative. And the only difference between what was originally proposed and what is the alternative plan reduces the 14% uh, increase that would go into effect in 2023 to a 6% increase. And so that uh, modification reduces the impact um, to the average residential bill by about half uh, in 2023. Um, and, um, and so that gives uh, a little less of a, uh, uh, an impact here in the next couple of years. And the offset of that is there won't be the accumulation of cash balances that would otherwise be available when the next round of capital projects are needed in 2024, 25, 26. So um, uh, I can summarize this by saying the both alternatives keep the, the utilities, all the utilities in strong financial uh, shape. Um, they are in position to take on the capital needs that are significant and important over the next several years. Um, so there's no compromising on the, on those matters. The only difference between the financial, the initial financial plan and the modified financial plan is the, um, the um, uh, softening of the rate increase in 2023 um, makes it uh, certain that we'll have to have a rate increase when the next round of capital projects are needed in 25, 26 or so. And that there will probably be another bond issue for the water utility in 25 and 26. Hopefully that long-winded um, uh, summary of the financial plan uh, was helpful and didn't confuse the matter but I certainly would be happy to take any questions about the financial plan 
um, if um, if there are questions to be asked. Thank you. Um, before I open up the floor to questions, Mr. Julian, just like my friend Mr. Emmons helped me clean up an error on my part earlier, I'm going to ask you to uh, assist in a, uh, a, a different fashion. Um, before we talk about other questions, uh, let's talk for a couple seconds about the amendment yeah. that we passed earlier. Now, my summary of this, and correct me if I'm wrong, was that the amendment that we did to this ordinance really had one or two at most uh, goals. It was to incorporate some technical corrections to the ordinance language that had been suggested by the state of Indiana and more to the point, the SRF program, so that if we needed to tap into that funding, we had language that was acceptable to them. And then there were also some refinements of the project list and the other attachments or exhibits to this ordinance. Is that accurate in terms of the amendment that was passed earlier? Yes, that is accurate. Okay, and then one other point of personal privilege. Because I am aging rapidly and might forget if I don't say it right now, um, it's my understanding that this is regrettably the last time that you'll be appearing before us. And that, and uh, although you have been a valued resource for us for many years, that you're moving on to the next stage of your life. So you may be talking earlier or later on other ordinances, but uh, before I forgot, I wanted to thank you for the work that you and all of the organizations as they have evolved that you've worked uh, for have done on behalf of the community and you in particular have always been someone that I think that we've all viewed as being trustworthy, competent, and provide us good advice and guidance. So I wish you well as you move into the next stage of your life. Those are very kind words and I, I appreciate it. And with that, now that we have the easy good stuff out of the way, I will open up the floor for any questions from the council. I, I do. Oh, Mrs. Volker, I'm sorry. I'm looking at this um, document that was sent out that shows the difference between the, I was looking at it and now my computer isn't showing it anymore, but it has, you know, like 17 million at the bottom of one and seven million or something like that at the mm -hmm. bottom of the other. Can you explain? Oh. Yes. Oh, whatever. I can't get it back up again. Can you explain that for me? No, not that one. Okay. It's the it's the it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a double column. Sure. Oh, I've got that one here too. It um, right. it's thank you. Mm -hmm. A schedule that um, distinguishes the difference between the um, water rate adjustment that was initially proposed and the one that uh, was then developed that has the 6% increase versus the 14%. As I mentioned, the only difference in the, the schedule that you're looking at um, just captures what each option funds, and I want to repeat, each option is going to fund the day-to-day -day operational costs, it's going to fund the retirement of the existing debt, it's going to um, take care of your normal capital improvements, it's going to fund the new debt, the new $52 million. both alternatives take care of that. The only difference between the original proposal and the modified proposal is how much uh, accumulated cash would be available for these major uh, uh, capital projects that are scheduled out in 25, 24, 25, 26. Under the original plan, there would be uh, almost 18 million, mm -hmm. and under the modified plan, around 8 million. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I understood it to be. I just wanted to make sure that I was understanding it correctly. As usual, you understood it exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Volker. Any other questions for Mr. Julian? A couple more just to summarize then, just for clarity for those who may be participating um, from a public standpoint. Again, with regard to the waterworks bonds that are um, it, it proposed here this evening, um, is it accurate that the total amount of the bond issuance would be approximately $51 million? Correct, but 51.6 is our working number. Okay, so 51.6 million dollars, and if memory serves from a prior public uh, meeting that we held, that the <coughs> term or the life of the bonds, it would be a 10-year bond issuance, is that correct? No, on the water, 
it actually would be a, a, a 20 year finance. 20 year. Thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate that. Um, all right. I don't believe I have any other questions for Mr. Julian. If no one else has questions at this point. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor, if you would, please come forward. Dave Majewski, Mishawaka Utilities Water Division Manager. Um, and Mr. Hickson, I uh, echo your sentiment toward Mr. Julian, and uh, you should read his book, Accounting for Dummies, for me. That's what he <laughs> gave me, and it's helped me out a lot. So it's uh, I appreciate, he makes me look smart. So I uh, appreciate Mr. Julian very much through this process. Um, Mr. Uh, Lamberis from Yale is passing out some handouts. Apologize to the council member, members who can't see those in person. Um, Thank you. But Mr. President, council members, thank you for your due, your due diligence. So, I know rates are a sensitive subject, and I am glad I'm not on your side of that table. Um, it's an exciting time in Mishawaka. As development continues to grow, just as important as what you see above ground is the infrastructure you rarely see. On the south side of the city, our new 2 million gallon reservoir and booster station completed late last year and the rehab of our 3 million gallon reservoir at the same site, which will be complete in the next few weeks or so, gives us redundancy where we had none. On the north, the new proposed 1.5 million gallon water tower will provide greater pressure to the University Park Pressure District, improving service to medical, commercial, and multifamily residential complexes, along with more storage and greater fire protection <laughs> capabilities. The new well field and treatment plant at Judy Creek will replace an aging facility at Gumwood, which can no longer meet the needs of development or water quality as it approaches the end of its useful life. The new plant will also be able to service the central pressure district and give us another redundant supply and allow the rehabilitation of our Virgil and division plants as that time nears. Currently, Gumwood is a backup and we have to move most of the water to the University Park pressure district by way of the Fur Road booster station. After nearly a decade of long-term planning within the city and thoughtful design by our engineers at DLZ, it has brought, it, brought us to this point. And I appreciate the support and partnership the council has given us to keep Mishawaka's water infrastructure strong for generations to come. It truly has been a great partnership and a pleasure to work with you all. Interest rates are at all time lows. This is our window and the right time to proceed. The need for water never stops and we should not pause now. Um, for reference now to the uh, handouts I passed out or Mr. Lamaris passed out, the uh, water system planning goes back all the way to 1997 with a recommendation for a new treatment plant at Gumwood in 2008. As things changed through the year, we got by fine, wasn't needed. And along 2009, St. Joe Regional Medical Center is constructed. They needed a clean, supplyable source of water. They use a lot of medical instrumentation that uh, Gumwood can't supply the water for. It's high in manganese. So we agreed to put in the Fur Road booster station. And that basically applied a Band-Aid to the system. So we're robbing Peter to pay Paul, sending water from the Central Pressure District to the UP Pressure District. And that, that has worked, but Gumwood has basically become a backup and, and useless. So we're relying on one source of water with the Fur Road booster station. So in earnest, we started looking for potential, potential sites for a new well field. Um, in 2012, when we first pulled some samples at the Judy Creek, Judy Creek Golf Course, then uh, that turned out positive and development and planning kept going forward. Then we updated our master plan around 2015 and you can see where we recommended a new well field in 2020. And as you see, all the timeline starts condensing as the water and the need really greatly uh, shown itself. Um, from May through October, we are in the, in the morning in a pinch for water up there. The one million gallon tank has trouble filling in the morning because we just do not have the supply and the demand is too great in that pressure district. So things got put on a fast timeline and with the help of the council, all the way approving the Judy Creek Golf Course in that partnership through Veterans Parkway, getting the infrastructure in place, it has put us at this point where we're we're ready to go. Um, so you can see that's a, the, the planning is there to support the planning. Sorry, I have mask asphyxiation. I'm finally getting some air in my body. Um, if you move to the second uh, handout, 
um, the growth in the city, um, if you look at the, uh, the grayish area, that was prior to 1980. Gunwood Wellfield went online in the 80s, and that's all that was up there. And then as you see, the decades pass, the growth continues, and uh, no improvements were made to the Gunwood Wellfield. We did some cursory things. Um, we changed from gas to chlorine bleach, but really nothing else was done up there with that well field, and the demand continued to grow. So now we're at this point now where we cannot support the growth with that well field, and we're relying on a booster station to push water to the North Pressure District at University Park Mall. So uh, you can see by that growth, from that little gray area to where we are now, um, we're sort of in a pinch. And then the uh, last handout, the current system water pressure, roughly between 32 and 67 PSI in the pressure district. Um, but as you go north in the pressure district, we, uh, the 32 PSI isn't much. By the time the three-story buildings, you get up to the top floor, you could be down to 29 PSI. With backflow devices, you could be in the lower 20s. Uh, minimum system pressure is 20 PSI, and then you get into boil order at that point if you can't maintain over 20 PSI. So we are on the edge up there. Um, growth continues, but we're sort of in a, like I say, in a little bit of a pickle up there, and we do need to react. Um, unfortunately, the pandem pandemic came along, but the use of water never will stop. Um, water is life. It's what I do. And I'm passionate about what we do for the city of Mishawaka. Um, you wake up every day, what's the one thing we can't do without? It's water. It's water. We need water every day of our lives to let it live. And uh, that's what we proudly do in Mishawaka. We serve the citizens. My department, I'm very proud of. I'm proud of serving with uh, you members of the council, our mayor. Um, and uh, I ask for your approval of this project. It is greatly needed, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank Any you. Questions? Any questions for Mr. Majeski? Mr. Emmons. Yeah, thank you. Looking at your graph here, is the orange or yellow, whatever you want to call it, between 1999 and 2010, and the burgundy one between developed between 2011 and 19. Are those Granger addresses? Not all. Some of that's uh, been um, annexed into the city. Um, probably Mr. Prince could speak better, but like the Beacon Parkway area, that is annexed into Mishawaka, I do believe. Um, and some of those others are in Mishawaka. But Ken, if... Uh, you know, looking at that map, is there a dividing line between Granger and Mishawaka? So the, as multiple issues here. So the district itself serves areas that are currently, a few properties that are currently located in Granger that we think will be in the city long-term. So when you look at the map and the areas, um, there are areas that go outside of our current city limits, um, but those reflect areas that we believe will grow and come into the city uh, over time. Regarding addresses, as this council is well aware that the post office and Granger services a portion of Mishawaka and they have, even though they're located in the city, they have a Granger address. So I don't know if I answered that question, um, Mr. Emmons, but that that's the sum of it as I see well, this Well, I graphic. just had a couple of constituents saying, you know, Mishawaka is basically 4-4 four, four, four and 4-5. Four, that's Mishawaka. Correct. And they're saying, that, you know, why are we supplying water and utilities in Granger where we are, we are not providing utilities to Granger. So okay. Okay. my understanding is the well field has capacity to grow. If Granger would ever need water, a certain amount of capacity could come from the city of Mishawaka. But the improvements that are being put in place, and Mr. Majeski can correct me if I'm wrong, um, are only being done to service our immediate and future growth needs of the city, not Granger. Okay. I just want a clarification, because I was asked that question. Very good. 
and in, in uh, the spirit of clarification for those who are participating remotely, those were answers uh, uh, submitted by Ken Prince, city planner. Thank you. I apologize. No, not a problem. That's what happens. Yeah. But you, uh, you guys make a good team. Take it on the road sometime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Majeski? Mrs. Volker. Thank you. I just wanted to <clears throat> thank you for the um, the graphic uh, presentation. Um, it's just interesting to, it makes it easy to understand, but I think the thing that you pointed out um, on page three that is the concerning um, problem is the water pressure and uh, the fact that we're on the third floor, we're so close to potentially having to do a boil. Yes, we boil are up. We are on the edge of and those institutions do have um, pumps to get the water up to the third floor because the system pressure can, does, not, not, does not provide enough pressure to get it to the top floor. Yeah, well, thank you. I, it just helps me understand a little bit more the importance and gravity of the situation and I appreciate the presentation. You're welcome. <clears throat> thank you, Mrs. Volker. Other questions? I guess one more comment, uh, Councilman. Um, up north, uh, the uh, the domino effect, like the mayor had stated, um, the Virgil and Division, they're approaching 20 years since Division was built, Virgil the Rehab 20 years ago. Without this project, we will not be able to take those offline to rehab those plants. So that's, that's the big concern down the line because this source of water, while it's in that pressure district, the elevation will let the water flow this way and with being a filtered source of water, we'll be able to turn off a plant and use the new plant to supply water. Thank you, sir. Great. Thanks, Mr. Hickson. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Compton. That does touch on something I was thinking while you were talking, Dave, and thank you for the presentation. It's mm -hmm. very, greatly appreciated. You're welcome. The um, booster station, or the pumping station that was put in to operation when the hospital was built? Yes. Um, that'll still be a you'll still use that as a facility uh, after after this is all complete yes yes but that, it, it will will it become more of a backup that is correct it'll okay. be a, it'll be a true backup actually instead of the primary source the pumps will have to be upgraded and that that is part of the project so you can back feed the system if you need to kind of either way We're yes we will the those pressure vaults at edison lakes parkway and the main street will be able to open those valves and feed water back this way and through fur road there's also a check valve we can feed full water this way okay so it will be a true backup at that point not a primary source very good thank you but mr schrader mr schrader if you would if you're gonna make some comments why don't you come to the podium well, people at home can't hear you that's all thank you jim Jim schrader again uh general manager i just wanted to point out that when now we must boost everything going north right right uh, yeah i knew elevation. that right now we'll have the opportunity to go the other direction but on a gravity basis and not have to spend or expend the money to do it from a pumping standpoint okay and then the well field north will not have require us to do that boosting that we do now right to a pretty good expense level on electric pump i'm sure yeah i'm sure thank you thank you for that information. Any other questions for Mr. Majeski? He was close to escaping us and then we caught him with one last question. Anything else for him? there? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Before I inquire as to whether or, all, or, or not there are others who want to speak in favor of this proposed ordinance, um, it is my understanding that are, there are one or more members of the council who would appreciate about a 10 minute recess before we move forward. So unless there are any objections, let's uh, recess for approximately 10 minutes and try to be back in the chambers by 920 by the big clock on the back of the uh, room. And then we'll proceed with further public hearing on this proposed matter. I was We're in recess. About objecting, but I, you know, I won't be there. Some of us were gonna leave regardless of whether you objected. <laughs>